Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to get you started on writing C++ programs using the Replit website. Now the Replit website gives you a fully functional online IDE that you can use for developing C++ programs, but you can also use it for other programming languages as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so once you've gone to replit.com, so you'll type in www.replit.com in your address bar, you'll be brought to this website right here. And what we'll need to do is we will need to log in. So we'll click on the login. And if you don't have an account yet, then you can sign up or you can just do what I do and just use Google since I have a Google account. And then that's gonna take you into their landing screen right here. And so now what we'll need to do is we will need to create a REPL so we can click on this right here, this button right here in the upper left-hand corner. And then we're gonna select what we're gonna be working with here. We're gonna select a template for this. We're gonna be working with C++. And then we're gonna name our project here. So maybe we name it assignment one. So then we'll click the create REPL button. And then that takes us into the REPLit main window here. And so you can see there's three different sections, right? So on the left-hand side, you've got a listing of all the files that belong to your current project. In the middle is where all of your source code goes. And in the right-hand side is a console that shows you the output of your code when you run it. To compile and run your program, you'll click on the Run button up here. Now let's go ahead and modify our little Hello World program here, just to show you that we can type in here and do all that kind of stuff. So using namespace std, and then rid of that. And we'll put in a pause for our program. Just again, just to show you that we can that we can modify this. Okay, so cn.get. Now when I want to test and run it, I just click the run button. And you can see that the output appears over in the right hand side. Now, if you want to download your source code file, you can go over here to the files window, hit the three dots there, and that allow you to rename. It'll allow you to copy a link to the actual source code file, but you can also download from here as well. So you just click the download button and then place it wherever you want. And I put it on my desktop in that case. And there you go, you can download it. Now you can also create new files by clicking the new file button here, um, new folders, subfolders to arrange your code right here. And if I wanted to get some input, from the user, then I could do something like this. I could do something like uh, index, and then maybe I'll prompt the user, enter a number, and then I'll read in what they typed in response, and then I'll display it to them. You entered this, so X say, okay. And then I'll go ahead and hit that run again. And you can see over here, it says enter number, and then I type the response, 18 hit enter and then my program you know continues continues doing its thing right read the number in and then display it to the screen now if we wanted to use files how would we do that okay well we could do hashtag include fstream and then maybe we'll save what the user entered to a file so we'll create a file for writing and i'll just call it um, output.txt and we'll do a text file here right so then we'll check to see if the file successfully opened and if so then we will just write to our file the contents of that x variable if it fails to open then we will write an appropriate error message let's see out file failed to open and let's not forget to close our file here Okay, now let's go ahead and click run here. And then that's gonna run it one more time. So I'm gonna enter a number 18, hit enter. It says you entered 18, which is right there. And then we wrote to a file, the number, so you can see that the file, the output file appeared over here in the same place as our source code file. So if I were to double click on that, you'd see there's the contents of the file, right? Now, if you're a student of mine and you're going to be submitting a homework assignment, then what you would do is you would 
copy the link to your project. You could do this right here. You, you could hit the, the uh, three dots here and then grab copy link and then submit that. Now, one last thing that I want to show you here is this history feature, and this is very, very, very important. So if you go down here at the bottom and you click on the history area right here, you click on this, that brings up a recording of all of the keystrokes that you made. And so you can drag this bar around here and you'll see all of the changes to your source code file that have been made, right? And so if I click on the play button here, you'll see everything that's happening. Okay, being played out. And you'll notice that it reproduces everything that I typed. Now let me show you how I could tell really easily if a student had um, cheated, right? Maybe they copied their code from somewhere else or something like that. So let's say, you know, they used AI or something to generate that, that code for handling the file, right? So if they just copied and pasted it and then ran it, you know, made sure that it worked and all of that. Okay. And then I go back to your history you're going to see that that code just appears instantly. See that? See the difference between what it looks like when you type everything out and then what it looks like when you just copy and paste. So if I see that copy and paste, then that's evidence of cheating. So students be warned. I'm going to be looking for that. I'll be reviewing this history here um, for your submissions. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. What did we talk about? We talked about how to get started using Replit to write C++ programs. We talked about how to submit homework assignments. And we talked about how you can use the history functionality of Replit to track the history or to review all of the code that you've written and how that can be used as evidence for cheating. Okay, so... If you're a student of mine and you have questions about the content of this video or any of the videos in our courses, feel free to stop by my online Zoom office hours or email me via Canvas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.